Donald Trump spent Wednesday doing something he's had to do quite often lately, damage control. The Republican presidential nominee has been working to clarify comments he made Tuesday about Hillary Clinton and the tremendous political power of Second Amendment people. Trump is blaming media bias for the uproar over his remarks and insisting he never advocated violence against Clinton. Major Garrett is in Florida. If you are running to be president or you are president of the United States, Words can have tremendous consequences. That was Hillary Clinton in Iowa today, yesterday, reacting to what Donald Trump said yesterday at a rally in North Carolina. If she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. Yesterday, we witnessed the latest in a long line of casual comments from Donald Trump that cross the line. Trump argued he was only talking about political advocacy, but the Secret Service felt compelled to announce it took note of Trump's comments. The inference of violence arises in an atmosphere of suspicion that Trump helped create, one in which the GOP nominee warned supporters of abridged Second Amendment rights if his opponent is elected. She basically wants to take your safety away. She wants to take your guns away. He also warns of a fraudulent November election. And I'm afraid the election's going to be rigged. I have to be honest. There is no because proof to either I charge. My side was when it comes to the language of running for and being president, precision is key. Every word is scrutinized for obvious and hidden meaning. Martin Medher studies presidential rhetoric at Baylor University. For a president, it's even more uh, severe because uh, when a president misspeaks or is ambiguous in ways that are not intentional, uh, he risks putting the country uh, in great harm. Modern U.S. presidents have something akin to a stock phrase on this front. And let it be clear. I want to be clear with you. Our message to the people of Iran is clear. So let me be uh, as clear as I can be. To clarify one important to clarify one important part of this story, the Secret Service said today it will take no formal action in regards to Trump's comments. Vlad, Trump on Twitter denied a report. The agency spoke with the campaign about the matter. Major, uh, Speaker Paul Ryan suggested Trump's original comments were a joke gone bad, but we haven't heard much from other top Republicans. What do you make of that? They're all deeply worried about this, the implication of it, the atmospherics around it. And they don't know what to do. If they come to Trump's defense, they set themselves up for if there is another unpredictable or incendiary thing or something that is interpreted that Trump says that lands flatly or wholly negatively, as this one did in the minds of many, they don't know what to do about it. This creates an atmosphere of, if not anxiety, deep worry about Trump and the direction of his campaign, the ability to say what he means and means what he says, and just think about where this campaign was trying to be on Monday, Vlad, talking about economic policy and change, and hoping it could stay on that message for one consecutive set of days, maybe even an entire week. Didn't work out that way. Hmm. Major, also, uh, you point out uh, the Secret Service uh, and Donald Trump's reaction to the idea that perhaps they may have spoken to someone in his campaign. But we do know that they were aware of it because they tweeted out last night that they were aware. The tweet here that we're showing to our viewers, the Secret Service is aware of the comments made earlier this afternoon. Major, I'm, I'm just curious, just the fact that there is ambiguity in what Donald Trump said. On one hand, you have his supporters that are saying it was about the power of the those who support the Second Amendment. On the other, you have the Clinton, uh, the Clinton camp and her supporters saying, no, this was a direct threat. But just that ambiguity, what does that mean for the Secret Service itself? Well, the Secret Service has to take everything that people either perceive to be dangerous or that the agency itself feels compelled to take note of. Now, the agency said today will take no formal action, which means it doesn't rise to the level of something it feels the need to investigate. But the mere fact the agency thought it was sufficiently important enough to publicly declare it was aware of the comments and knowing what that declaration would suggest, meaning the Secret Service felt it was, let us say, interesting enough and compelling enough for it to take a look at, tells you a lot about what it thought Trump was either implying or might have been implying and therefore needed to at least announce publicly its awareness of it. The Secret Service could have said absolutely nothing about this and said it has no comment, 
doesn't believe it warrants any comment. It did not do that. By publicly acknowledging it was something sufficient to at least study and evaluate is something we've never seen in modern presidential history. Major Garrett reporting from Sunrise, Florida. Major, thanks.